Welcome to Passioneer Magazine, the podcast where you hear inspirational stories, encouraging news, and in depth interviews with authors, influencers, CEOs, and thought leaders. Passioneer Magazine, the podcast. Bold ideas, brave pursuits, boundless inspiration. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me for Passioneer Magazine. I'm your host, Dr. Angela Butts Chester. This week, we're going to look at ways in which we can boost self confidence and self esteem. Now, I know so many times people talk about these things, and you go, I really think folks are kind of talking this to death. The reason why is because so many people express how they wish that they could be more confident, that they wish that they had better self-esteem. When you are in attendance in a lot of webinars or conferences and they take questions from the audience, there is someone who is saying, how do I walk in confidence? How do I become better at. And I think that's the reason why you hear um, so much information on certain topics is because it does not get old because there's always someone new stepping up and trying to step out in the life that they believe that they have been called to walk in. So this week, we're going to look at boosting confidence and self-esteem. And again, it is very critical that our personal and our entrepreneurial success are built upon these things. Um, If you don't believe me, just ask someone. When you're not feeling confident, then you tend not to make some of the best decisions that you could. So with that being said, let's look at some ways that we could improve those two things. Number one would be, and these are not in any particular order. I'm simply giving it a number so we know where we are in the conversation. Number one would be self-awareness. Start by understanding yourself, right? Identify your strengths. Identify your weaknesses. As well as what are your values and your passions. Knowing who you are is the foundation of your self-confidence. If you're not sure who you are, then you're not going to be able to articulate who you are to someone else. You are not going to be able to convince me that you are confident when you're not. When you are, you act accordingly. So be aware, be self-aware and work on those things that you need to work on. Everyone has had to take the time to self-assess and to work on a piece of them. Anyone who tells you that they didn't, that they just came into this world absolutely positively perfect is lying to you. They're not even gaslighting you. They're lying to you because everyone has to work on a something to make sure that they are giving their best. Number two would be set achievable goals. Now, establish clear, specific, and achievable goals. We hear that all the time. Make sure that our goals are smart. So when you set and attain a small goal, it boosts your self-confidence and it makes you more prepared for bigger challenges and to be uh, able to celebrate those bigger wins. Now, you might be saying, are you serious, Dr. Angela? You want me to celebrate the fact that I drove home safely? Absolutely. You want me to celebrate the fact that I did my podcast today when I knew I was going to do my podcast today? Absolutely. Something could have happened and you not do your podcast today. Something could have happened and it delayed your getting home safely, right? So, If we take the time to look at what is the win of the day, to review the day throughout the day and find the wins, then our brain says, oh, so you want to win. Well, here we go. Next is positive self-talk. We must absolutely, positively be mindful of our inner dialogue, of our talk 
with self, to self, with self, all by ourselves. However, you understand that when you are talking to yourself, especially about yourself, you must be in a positive mindset from a positive standpoint. The conversations that we have with ourselves must be of the best caliber. We cannot speak toxicity into our own lives. We cannot bring negativity into our circles. We must speak from a positive perspective. So be mindful of your inner dialogues. Replace negative self-talk with positive affirmations. When you catch yourself thinking ne negatively about something, by all means, stop. <laughs> Counteract those thoughts with a positive one. Now, many that talk about how to make sure that we are speaking from a positive perspective, have all of these wonderful little life hacks of things that we can do, things that we can say to make sure that we stop it, that we nip it in the bud. If you've heard one of those such hacks, then I say try the one that makes the most sense for you. One that I heard that I thought was really simple to do was to say, cancel. So if you start to have a negative thought, you're starting to get all into the worry, all into the weeds of things, then you simply say, cancel and start over. You stop yourself. You're canceling that thought. It doesn't mean that you are pretending that it doesn't exist. It does not mean that you are denying that there is something that needs your attention. What you are doing is canceling the thought that is going to put you in a place that is less than positive when you aren't able to do something about it in that moment. Especially if there's something else that needs your attention and it needs you to be in a positive headspace. So again, make sure that when you are speaking with yourself, that you are replacing your negative self-talk with positive words of affirmation, with positive points of view, and with positive pieces of truth to reaffirm. Next, dress for success. Now, we have been hearing this wonderful reminder all of my life. You dress for where you want to be, not for where you are. You dress for your mind's eye vision version of yourself, not for who you are in your current place. Now, that means different things to different people. For some folks, it means I finally get to take off this suit and put on jeans and a t-shirt. For others, it's the exact opposite. Finally, no more jeans and t-shirt and off to a suit. Whatever the success uniform is for where you want to go, that's what I'm talking about. Dressing well and in a way that makes you feel good about yourself can significantly impact your self-esteem. Now, we all know that when we feel that we look a particular way, boy, do we walk like it, right? We walk with a bit of attitude. You have a little sassiness in your step. You have a bit of confidence in your stride. So when we are dressing for success, whatever that looks like for you, then you are your most confident, your most comfortable self. When you look good, you have a tendency to feel better about yourself. Now, ladies, we know that many of our mothers and grandmothers would tell us, don't leave the house without some powder on your face. Don't you step out that door without some lipstick on your lips. Did you put on mascara today? Whatever it is that you need to do to make yourself feel your best, then you do that. If that means no more lipstick, but only lip gloss, then gloss it up. If it means that you no longer have to go out in full glam, but a simple, clean, fresh face is success for you now, then fresh face 
It is. All I'm saying is make sure that you are dressing for the success in which you want to walk. That may look different for each person, but whatever it is for you, I hope that you do it. Next is celebrate those successes. That's right. Don't downplay your achievements. So many times we hear that we must absolutely positively pay no attention to ourselves. Don't feed ego. Now, I'm not telling you to turn into a pompous person. I'm not telling you that you should turn into, you know, the guy or gal that no one wants to be around. But I am saying that you should plan to celebrate your victories. When you celebrate your achievements, both small and large successes, by acknowledging your accomplishment, it reinforces your self-esteem. Again, our brains say, oh, we like this. We want more. What can we do to make sure that we have another whim, another victory, another achievement? You will be surprised what your mind can create for you when you give it a directive. Give it the instruction. We are going to create the next best this. We need to fix this so that it can do that. How do we do it? Brainstorming is a beautiful and wonderful thing. And let me tell you, when you come up with the right answer and you implement those little tweaks that you needed to implement to make your something an amazing thing, boy, are you excited about that. Celebrate that. If you have just reached your hundredth something, your thousandth, your five thousandth, maybe it's your millionth something. Maybe you are now working towards 10 million of something. Celebrate it when you get there. It does not have to be a lavish party unless you want it to be and can afford to do so, right? Have a celebration. Just celebrate it. If that means treating yourself to a coffee when you have been trying to be a little more frugal. Sure, have that latte, that cappuccino, whatever it is that you want to have. Or perhaps you've been wanting to go to a certain restaurant and you said you wouldn't go until you made that achievement. A little delayed gratification. Go, celebrate, have a great night. Even if that great night is in instead of out, maybe you're always out and about. And the way you're going to celebrate is to now be in your home, to be inside, away from all the hustle and bustle, with just a really nice, calm night with friends or family, just doing something that makes you happy. But the important part is, is that we celebrate the successes. Now, I want to add a flip side of that coin. And that is, if you didn't do it alone, include those that helped you reach the goal. I cannot reiterate enough that we should make sure that we are including our teams in our celebration. Now, if you're a solopreneur, if you're a solo person, totally and completely doing it on your own, and you do not have a lot of other people that are involved, okay, I understand. Um, But if you have teams, and especially large teams that help you accomplish something, make sure you're including them. Now, you may be a solopreneur that works with various teams. Make sure you include your teams in that celebration, even if it has to be a Zoom call. But make sure you have moments of accolade with your team members as well. Now, solopreneurs have definitely changed and evolved over the years, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it is a one-person show. Sometimes it means that it is one person for a time period, and then there's 20 people because we've hired a team. Or perhaps you fluctuate throughout the year depending on the events that you're putting on, the things um, that you are doing, and then you have teams that that reflect that project that you are working on. If that's the case, make sure that you are including that team, be it that you are a solopreneur or you are a huge enterprise. Make sure that you are celebrating with those that matter most.
And lastly, there are so many things that you could do, but if I list today, I want to remind you to visualize and use your affirmations, regularly visualizing your success and repeating positive affirmations cannot be spoken enough. That is so important. Now we look at athletes in today's society and one of the things that we notice when they are starting, uh, when they're still getting ready right before they start, many times we can see them going through their visualization. We can see them running down uh, the track. We can see them uh, visualizing themselves making uh, the throw, the catch, whatever it is that they have to do. We can see that they're not distracted by the other people on the field or the course. They're not distracted by the crowd or those in the stands because they are busy visualizing what they want to do. So if we know that that's something that elite athletes do, then we know that we should do it for what we are responsible for as well. So regularly visualize not only where you are, but the success that you are trying to obtain. It's not about where you are in this moment. You know exactly where you are right now, today, right now, listening, bing, you know where you are, right? But it's where you're trying to go. That's what you keep in your mind's eye. That's what you hold onto and say, I am going there. I have achieved that in this moment. That is the result that I am walking in. And you repeat your you repeat your positive affirmations. Again, none of that toxic talk is allowed. You want to make sure that you are boosting your confidence and maintaining a positive mindset. Now, again, there are so many things that we could do to make sure that we are walking in the best confidence and self-esteem that we can, but there's just not enough time to go over them all. But I think that I've given you just a taste of a few of the things that you could do if you are the person or you know someone who needs to have a little bit of a reminder that yes, you are awesome and amazing. Yes, you are exactly who you have been playing placed on this earth to be. Don't let the distractions deter you from where you're trying to go. Instead, stay focused. Remember that you can do it. Remember that you are equipped to do awesome and amazing things. So go on, achieve it, and then come back and tell us how you did it. Thank you for listening to Passioneer Magazine, the podcast.